Academy Award winner Kate Winslet is out this weekend with a new movie called Lee, playing the lead role in the extraordinary true story of Lee Miller, a fashion model turned war correspondent for Vogue magazine during World War II. The film comes on the heels of Winslet's acclaimed performance in the HBO series The Regime, a dark comedy where she stars as the dictator of a fictional European nation. Over the course of her 30-year career, Winslet has been nominated for seven Oscars and won five Golden Globes and a pair of Emmys, most recently for Mayor of Easttown. Kate and I got together in New York earlier this year for a Sunday sit-down. At first, Kate Winslet wasn't so sure about playing a dictator. You know, I would just sit with my eyes closed and say to my husband, just, ca I can't, I can't, <laughs> and just, here's a great list of wonderful people who would be excellent oh, in this role. Oh, you prepared alternates. I had a full list. But the Oscar winner was the only choice. It is time to show America and the world precisely what we are worth. In The Regime, Winslet plays Chancellor Elena Vernon, a vaguely European leader whose grasp on power and reality Just are slipping away. Be better at being normal. Good, let's start. I play a slightly larger than life, absurd, sometimes repulsive, sometimes oddly lovable, challenging female dictator. But then there's this other really fantastic, unexpected dynamic, which is that she finds herself totally falling in love with a very unlikely ex-soldier who is employed to take care of her and only her. And these two people become obsessed with one another and uh, it's quite funny. Hmm. This mustard will help. Go on then. Slap me up like a sandwich. Where did you start? Was it the accent? Was it a look? I felt instinctively right away, I mustn't sound like myself. I was quite nervous that if I opened my mouth and I spoke like that, that people would automatically assume that they were watching a story about the British monarchy. So it was important right away that we were able to establish that this was somewhere else. It is an imagined universe. This is a character clearly has got mother issues, abandonment issues, serious father issues, and she's a leader, you know, and she wants to look poised. But of course, it's all a mask. Mm. So for me to kind of peek behind the curtain as to, okay, why does she keep saying, and no, I'm marvelous, aren't I? Let's go, yes, I, let's go, good, good, quick, quick, happy, happy. How do I look should not be a rhetorical question no, that you answer yourself, yes. right? Yes, <laughs> how do I look? I look marvelous. <laughs> For Winslet, the regime was not just a juicy role, but a joyful return to her first love, playing with friends on a set. You do have a wonderful way with half-wit, don't you? Coming out the other side of COVID, I hadn't realized quite how much I had, well, not just missed being in a collaborative group of actors like that, but I, emotionally, I really needed it. Maybe a reminder of why you started acting, to be around people like that. That's it, that's yeah. exactly it. Born into a family of often struggling actors about 50 miles outside of London, Winslet was drawn to the family business. Was there any chance you were not going to become an actress given where you came from? When you're little, you know, and people say, when I grow up, I want to be a vet. I would think to myself, when I grow up, I want to be on stage. Mm. But I didn't know how to say it. But I certainly never thought that I would be in films. Roles in local theater turned into a part on the BBC series, Dark Season. Then as someone once said, never listen to what people tell you, only what you tell yourself. And at 17 years old, a breakout lead in the 1994 film, Heavenly Creatures. I am actually from England, Miss Stewart. Of course. <laughs> Her introduction to a life in the movies. You look at the call sheet, your pickup time might be, you know, 3.50 a.m. or 4.10 a.m. It's like having a secret. I have my little coffee in my thermos. I'm running my lines. Who else gets to do this? And you don't take it for granted, it doesn't nah, seem. God, no. And being cast number one on that call sheet comes with a responsibility. You know, that's my job, to walk on that set and make sure that everyone feels heard, supported, you know, that we're all going to go into this together. In 1997, the rising star quickly became a global celebrity when she played Rose alongside Leonardo DiCaprio's Jack in one of the biggest movies in Hollywood history. I want to let go, Jack. 
Kate Winslet had just turned 22 when Titanic hit theaters, turning her life upside down overnight. Obviously, when Titanic comes out in 1997, everything changes for yeah. you. What was that moment like in your life as that became a phenomenon? Actually, in its most acute phase of Titanicness, it was really not much fun because I didn't have kind of an infrastructure, I guess, that went hand in hand with being a famous person. Also, when you are given opportunities like that when you're young and you're a girl, you just shut up and be grateful. So there was a lot of kind of, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, thank you, thank you. And so I felt like I really had to sort of stand up for myself. Do people really think I'm fat? Like, I'm not fat. I'm just a healthy, normal person. That's how I am. But kind of being scrutinized for it and having to almost explain myself or my shape was just wrong. I could just sort of take a step back and was able to at least recognize, hang on a second, I, okay, I'm famous, but I don't feel like I want to be famous. Also, I'm not good enough. I have to, I've got, I've got to learn stuff. I've got to experience the kind of anxiety of playing this role and that role and learn from it and make mistakes and grow. To quiet down her own life in the wake of Titanic, Winslet chose smaller movies that became beloved classics. My name is Clementine, by the way. I'm Joel. In 2009, she won a Best Actress Academy Award for her performance in The Reader. We couldn't just let them escape. We couldn't. We were responsible for them. At 48 and well on the other side of the Titanic whirlwind, Winslet lives with her husband and children in a quiet corner of England as a new generation of actors benefits from her experience. The fact that that doesn't happen anymore makes me want to weep for joy. I watch wonderful actresses now. They have a voice. They play incredible roles. They don't have to explain it. That equal level of ownership to the guys, they have it. Well, you had probably a role in some of that progress, which is to say, this is not OK, what was happening to Kate Winslet. You know, if you were a step on the ladder, I sifted through the rubble and went through the kind of shit bit <laughs> in the hope that maybe one day things would change. And so now I can quietly say, maybe I did have a little bit to do with that. I hope I did. Just a bit. She certainly did. The Regime is streaming on Max, and Kate's new movie, Lee, is in theaters now. Our thanks again to the Grey Wind Restaurant in New York for hosting our conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full extended interview with Kate Winslet, including much more on that titanic whirlwind. You can find our conversation on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.